Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is day 281. December the 13th, 2017. Wednesday. And we all know what Wednesday is. That is the day that I take out the trash and eat chicken. Every Wednesday. I take out the trash and I eat chicken. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get started. Did the FBI or the Justice Department the deep state operators write the dossier. Was it a joint effort? Back when we were looking at these court filings from the case in the UK, Christopher Steele was saying that he never dealt directly with the Russian sources, that he used intermediaries. Now I know that you've heard people all across the spectrum telling you that Christopher Steele used Russians for his sources. But if you look at the court filings, which we know have to be the truth because he's under oath in these court filings, his attorney, Christopher Steele's attorney, he's saying his client did not deal directly with the Russians, he dealt with intermediaries. So for some time I've been asking who are these intermediaries? I wondered, could they be other British intelligence guys? Could they be um, people from the EU in, in intelligence? Could they be German intelligence? Uh, could they be uh, private individuals who have some knowledge of some things? Who might they be? But now, with the recent revelations over the past two or three weeks, what we're learning about Mr. Orr and his wife, what we're learning about Peter Benstrokinus, what we're learning about other people connected to Fusion GPS, it's becoming somewhat obvious to me that this was not just an opposition research or a slander piece, uh, a political document. It's much more than that. And it appears that there's been some collusion between Fusion GPS and people within the State Department and the FBI which is now leading me to conclude that possibly the reason that Christopher Steele will not reveal the intermediaries is because it may be some individuals like maybe John McCain, David Kramer, or how about someone like Mr. Orr? How about Peter Ben Strokinus? How about someone working for McCabe or Comey in the intelligence community? How about one of John Brennan's CIA spooks. We know that Christopher Steele was very connected to U.S. intelligence. And we know that John Brennan is mixed up in this somewhere. That's Hillary's boy. It's becoming pretty obvious to me that these intermediaries that are discussed in the court filings in the UK lawsuit of uh, Gubarev versus BuzzFeed, or Gubarev versus Christopher Steele, in the UK, when he talks about these intermediaries, he doesn't want to talk about who they are or will not reveal their names. I wonder why. But it's becoming more and more likely that this dossier wasn't just something that was happening on the peripheral that found its way into the FBI or through the intelligence community. It's becoming much more likely now that this was a joint effort with the full cooperation and in fact, based on what we talked about this past Sunday with Mike Whitney's article where he points out the stark difference between the early memos of the dossier and the final memo of the dossier where it went from being a salacious National Enquirer type story into a like an intelligence document, it appears that some other people probably within the intelligence community got their input into that dossier. So what may have started out as a political thing may have ended up actually being corrupted at the end by the intelligence agencies and the FBI, the Justice Department, because we have people on the inside that are personally connected to Fusion GPS and Christopher Steele. It's becoming obvious to me that when we get to the bottom of this, we're going to find out 
that the FBI, the Department of Justice, and the CIA were not just spectators in the stands observing and looking into the things that were in the dossier, but that they were most likely at some point along the way, particularly at the end, very likely contributors to the dossier. And if we find that that is true, there will be many people, many high level people going to jail and they should. Nixon could have only dreamed of something like this. This would be essentially a attempted coup d'etat by the deep state, meaning the intelligence community, the Justice Department, the previous administration. And what makes it even worse is this wasn't just something that they may have been running on their own because they feared that Trump would attempt detente with the Russians and mess up their deal, but that they actively worked alongside a presidential candidate in a presidential campaign. This is serious business, my friends. And we're going to get pretty close to the bottom of it. You may not learn everything, but we're going to learn enough because there's too many people that are not letting go. We'll have more as we move through today's tower gate to back up this evidence. Chuck Ross of the Daily Caller. The federal judge has recused herself for a second case involving Fusion GPS. We're talking about the story we covered about two weeks ago with this judge, Tanya Chutkin, who recused herself from the court case that's going on where Devin Nunes is trying to subpoena bank documents from Fusion GPS to find out if he paid or who he paid journalist. He wants to find out who the journalists were that Fusion GPS was paying during the summer of 2016. So this judge, Tanya Chutkin, uh, recused herself and she had to be replaced by another judge, which is good news because that's a good judge. Now we find out that she's recused herself from a second Fusion GPS related case that she was hearing. That's the case of Mr. Gubarev. And Mr. Gubarev is also seeking the exact same, although he's looking for even more wide ranging documents from Fusion GPS, not just banking, he's looking for other things. Mr. Gubarev's attorneys want to know basically the same thing the House Intel Committee wants to know. They want to know what that dossier was all about. And Mr. Gubarev personally wants to know who put his name in there saying he was the one that was doing the work for Putin. That's what Mr. Gubarev wants to know. And believe me, if he finds out it's someone at the FBI or the State Department or, or the uh, CIA or someone like that, oh my goodness, look out. Because he is a foreign national. So the question is, why did Chutkin recuse herself two weeks ago from the first investigation uh, or the first hearings with Nunes uh, trying to get these documents and now she recuses herself from the second one which involves Gubarev and Fusion GPS wanting records? Well, it turns out that she worked for a law firm that was also a shady type law firm there was a politically left-leaning law firm that did the same kind of shady work as uh, the uh, as the law firm that the rotten Reverend Clinton was working with during the campaign. Another law firm, but just the same. And it appears that that law firm that she worked for also worked with Fusion GPS. So it appears that she has discovered, rediscovered, I should say, this old conflict of interest that she may have because she worked for a law firm that worked with Fusion GP GPS. Now the lawyer that replaced her, uh, we found out that he had some relations with John Podesta. But as far as we can tell, he's still moving forward on that case. 
But now this second attorney, this second judge that is going to be replacing uh, Chutkin in the case, which is Gubarev versus BuzzFeed, it appears that the judge who will be taking over that case is a judge named Trevor McFadden, who was just recently appointed by Trump. So we'll keep following this very closely, as you know I do. And we'll find out whether or not they're going to get them records. But I was looking into uh, this thing just last night uh, to see if there were any more oral arguments or anything made in the last week or so. And it appears that there has been. It appears that right now that judge, the first judge in the first case of Nunez trying to get the records from GPS, it appears that he has accepted Nunez's attorney's position and based on the judge's statement, he's now thrown it back into the court of Fusion GPS's attorneys to say, okay, why not what they say? Because the judge feels at this point that um, by releasing just the name and the transaction is not a violation of these clients' First Amendment rights, which is the case that the defense is making on behalf of Fusion GPS. The judge isn't really buying it. So right now, it looks like Nunez is winning this, this case to get the rest of those records from Fusion GPS to find out who he paid to spread the fake news. Sarah Huckabee Sanders versus Jim Acosta. It just keeps getting better and better all the time. <laughs> and we're, so we're starting to ask the question. She actually is now mentioned possibly banning him or taking his press credentials to keep him from press briefings. I was wondering when this was going to happen. I would have booted him out a long time ago. But I think she's definitely put Jim Acosta on notice and uh, because she, for the first time, has mentioned that she might remove his press credentials. Should have been done a long time ago. That guy is just a hack. Pocahontas. <laughs> she has accused Trump of slut shaming. The funny thing about this is that President Trump was talking about this female senator. He's talking about Kristen Gillibrand, who begged him for don donations and visits and said that she would do anything for these campaign donations. That got Pocahontas to send out a tweet accusing Trump of slut shaming. <laughs> so the only way that you can read into this tweet by Pocahontas if she's referring to Trump is slut shaming and Trump was talking about Kristen Gillibrand, then what she's essentially saying is that she's basically saying that, that Kristen Gillibrand is a slut. That's certainly the way it looks. I mean, how else could you read that? And a lot of media outlets are reading it the same way, which just goes to show Pocahontas, I hope she is the 2020 nominee for the Democrats because that woman is dumber than dog snot. I mean, this woman is dumb. Every time I see her, I can't think what people see in her. I mean, she's a moron. And I really hope that she, I really hope that she runs. She's a, she's a, She's soundbite magic. But yes, she is accusing Trump of slut shaming. And of course, we can only assume that the slut she must be talking about is Kristen Gillibrand. It appears that the deputy FBI director, McCabe, has postponed his scheduled Tuesday appearance before Nunez's House Intel Committee because of a routine scheduling error. Nobody's buying that. It's more likely that he's got a little problem, two little problems. They would be Bruce and Nellie Orr. That's the two problems he's got. Ain't no scheduling conflict. He's got to talk to some good lawyers and find out what in the hell he's going to do. He's the assistant FBI director, the deputy FBI director. He can't sit there and plead the fifth, can he? Oh, he can, but he, he, he won't. He can't. I mean, you, you can't do that. You know, if he was a private citizen, he could. But as a government official, I don't think the Congress would take too highly to him pleading the fifth there, would they? No, they would not. 
Now, Rosenstein has not yet backed out, but I expect that that may happen as well. Both Rosenstein and McCain do not want to face Devin Nunes and his committee because they got the goods on them. And there's no doubt that Devin Nunes is turning up the heat big time. Yeah, if I'm McCabe, I'm very, very worried about that hearing. Very, very worried. And so should Rosenstein be very, very worried. And, the, and the, it's not just going to end at the House Intel Committee. The Senate Intelligence Committee will have them over there as well. And then the Oversight Committee. They better lawyer up, and they better get some good ones. Well, MSNBC, Cuomo, and Camerata have a meltdown. And they're melting down over the idea that Trump was laughing his butt off over their errors and their reporting. <laughs> I watched this. I, it was like about a four-minute clip or something. But it was just hilarious. I'm watching NBC talking about how Trump is laughing his butt off because of the errors that they and other uh, media cohorts are making. And they're upset about this. Which begs the question, then why don't you people quit running fake news? <laughs> it's, abs it's, it's kind of like bizarre. It's like absurd comedy or something. I mean, it literally is becoming common. Watching MSNBC, watching this nutcase Cuomo and uh, Camerata, or whether it's uh, Joe and Mika or whoever you're watching, it's becoming like a, a, a freaking comedy over there. It's hard to tell whether or not it's actually straight so-called news or comedy. It, it's The lines are so blurred at this point, you literally cannot tell. I mean, it's unbelievable. Well, it is about 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here in damn cold Southern Ohio. I don't know where you all are watching, but I hope from wherever you're watching this video from, it's a lot warmer than where I am because today I don't think we capped 23 or 24 degrees with a stiff wind blowing. Very nasty, gray, cloudy, nasty day. They're expecting we'll get down in uh, 13 tonight. That's where they <clears throat> do the weather from, but here where I live in this little town I live in, which sits in kind of a valley here, it'll probably get down in the single digits tonight. It's damn cold. Now, we're used to getting down into these types of temperatures every now and then in January and February. We'll get a week or two. We'll get a blast like this, a clipper system out of Canada, and we'll get down in the low teens or single digits, but we're not used to that um, in the beginning or middle of December. This is more like late January, February weather for us, but we're in the grips of a nasty cold snap. I can always say that I hope those of you who are out there watching are in a much warmer place than I am. Although it's nice and warm in my house, <laughs> in my little TV room, my little, uh, what I call my music room. My, I got nothing but nice high-end studio monitors, 300 watts RMS of power, and lots of good music, musical instruments, all the things you need to have a good time in a small room. My little Cape Cod west wing of my house here that goes out onto my screened-in back porch where I do my grilling. It's quite comfortable here right now and toasty. But if you step outside, it's freezing. Anyway, as I'm sitting here at about 8 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time on uh, Tuesday evening, um, the race in Alabama appears to be neck and neck. And that is not good. We know that in the past... Um, 24 hours, there have been a ton of outside money which has come into Alabama. Five to six million dollars has come in uh, and is now these ads running on TV down in Alabama non-stop. They've had a couple new sexual allegations they've dropped in the last 24 hours. I really hope the people of Al Alabama can sustain what is happening to them down there. But at this point, for this race to be this close, and I it looks like some of the places where Roy Moore was supposed to do really well, he's almost in a dead heat in the, you know, at this point, and that means that what's coming in later should favor Jones, whose name I don't even want to mention. But this, I would say, is not good. I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that the turnout is low, uh, but we know what they've done in the last week or two, the, what the Democrats have done with money and the amount of firepower they've sent in there, probably busting people in the inner cities to the polls, 
probably voting at least three or four times each. God only knows how this is going to turn out, but right now, I'm mighty nervous. I was fairly confident, even after the Fox News poll came out yesterday, because I looked at an aggregate of polls, which had more up by four points. But in Alabama, that's not good either. I mean, Trump won there by 25 or something points. It's not good. And uh, if he loses this race, it'll be the fault of the Republican National Committee and the Republican Party and the National Republicans. Because for so long in this race, including Twitch McConnell and others, they did everything they can to take, to take the legs out from underneath Roy Moore. It's only been in the last week that they finally come around. And I don't know that they really have. They just probably did all they could do. So right now it's too close to call, but by this time tomorrow, in fact, as you're watching this video, you'll know. We'll all know. But right now as I'm recording this video, the polls have just closed a little while ago, and we just don't know other than the fact that the latest, latest I can find is that it's a dead heat right now. And that's probably not good, looking at the areas that have voted and the counties that are left yet to vote it should start moving in the direction of Roy Moore's opponent unless they have a low turnout. But based on the amount of money and effort that went into it, we're probably not going to see that. So, by the time you're watching this video tomorrow, we'll know who won the Alabama race. It's, a, it's, it's important. It's a, it's a, you know, the, the Senate is so close right now. Fortunately, in 2018, as Mora has pointed out in uh, her various postings, of the Senate seats that are up. There's a lot more Democrats up than there are Republicans, and there's some very vulnerable Democrats, but you don't like to see things going this way. We'll keep watching. Attorney General Sessions is weighing appointing a special counsel to investigate the DOJ, the Department of Justice, uh, over the Fusion GPS contacts. Yeah, I mean, it's about time. Of course, he should be weighing a special counsel. The entire DOJ and FBI appears to be corrupt. Mr. and Mrs. Orr, obviously, uh, close contacts to Fusion GPS. We already know about Ben Strokinus. We're finding out about others. Yeah, the whole thing's corrupted, uh, Jeff. You might want to uh, roll up your sleeves and get to work. You might have to get your hands dirty in this thing. It's time to get involved, Attorney General Sessions. Oh, by the way, you need to unrecuse yourself because we just learned today that Jeff Sessions should never have ever recused himself in the first place. You know why? The reason he recused himself is because when he was being questioned in the hearings, there was two occasions where he met with the Russian ambassador, not actually met with him, but had had contact with the Russian ambassador Kislyak that he forgot to mention. One was at the Republican National Committee, where it was like, oh, hi, how you doing? You know, yeah, good to see you. Yeah, well, it's all great. Huh? Yeah, well, thanks all. See ya. It wasn't a, speech, a special secret meeting or anything like that. And there was another uh, point where he had contact with Mr. Kislyak that, you know, slipped his mind. He was a senator. But we're now learning that before Jeff Sessions was, uh, when he was being briefed by the FBI about what things he could talk about and not talk about and this and that and the other thing, uh, he was told that you do not have to admit, nor does it matter, about having relations with official Russian government officials when you're a sitting senator. It's not at issue, and it's nothing uh, that uh, should be an issue at all. So we're now finding out that his two contacts with Kislyak were of no consequence whatsoever and should have not have caused him to uh, have any repercussions of that. And he should never have had to recuse himself in the first place. There was nothing wrong with him having had contact two times with Kislyak because he was a sitting U.S. Senator. That's what we just learned today. He never had to recuse himself ever. So, what should happen now is he should unrecuse himself. He should immediately get balls deep into the FBI 
and to the Justice Department that he's head of, and he should start figuring that out. He needs to start getting involved, and he needs to get that figured out. And he probably should appoint a special prosecutor. I'm not big fans of it, but you have to, because here we're talking about an investigation of the DOJ and the FBI. You can't have the DOJ and the FBI investigate themselves. That's what's been happening. So, there you go, Jeff Sessions. You're a free man. You never had to recuse yourself in the first place. You need to unrecuse yourself. And you need to immediately get extremely involved in what's going on there at the DOJ and the FBI. Or you're going to find yourself being very embarrassed, Mr. Sessions, because if you don't do it, eventually, either Mr. Gubrev's attorneys or Devin Nunes' committee or Grassley's committee or some journalist is going to sniff this thing out and expose a lot of a lot of bad stuff and the fact that it will have gone on under your nose and you did nothing is not going to reflect very highly on you Mr. Sessions so you may want to man up and you may want to take care of business it's about time on October the 31st Slate's Franklin Fear wrote a story alleging secret communications between Trump's campaign and Russia's Alpha Bank. The story has been debunked. The story came from Fusion GPS. According to the Washington Times and then The Intercept, which is a left-leaning uh, site for sure, that's Glenn Greenwald's site, who's a good journalist, by the way, another honest lefty, did their own follow-up investigation and concluded the same. No question, Fusion GPS was the source of that story. Now, this proves that Fusion GPS was directly connected to the Rotten Reverend Clinton's campaign. <clears throat> Because this was a story, if I remember when this came out, it got some play for about a week or two before it was debunked. They were claiming that Trump had a server in Trump Tower that was pinging, communicating with a Russian bank server. But it turned out it wasn't. It was Trump's server being pinged by some automatic advertising site that sends automatic pings to servers around the world trying to you know, sell advertising and things like that. It wasn't anything to do with a Russian government server, Russian this, nothing to do with Russia at all. It was all debunked. But that story was propagated by the Hillary Rotten Reverend Clinton campaign. And we now know that the origin of that story was Fusion GPS. So that just shows that Fusion GPS was connected to even more fake news than what we had already known. It was used directly by the Hillary Rotten Reverend Clinton campaign to smear President Trump. You ready for this one? Well, of course, we just learned that Bruce Orr, number four man at the Justice Department, met with Chris or uh, Glenn Simpson during Thanksgiving week of 2016. We know that he talked several times with Christopher Steele and has a relationship with him. And then we find out that his wife worked at Fusion GPS. That's what we've learned in the last week. I got another one for you. It appears that his wife, Nellie, also worked for the CIA. Bruce Ward's wife is CIA. Do you think that uh, Fusion GPS may be a front company that is CIA? Fusion GPS, a CIA front company. The CIA has thousands and thousands of front companies all over the world, posing as every type of company you can imagine, including news organizations. When you look at the close connection here, you have to wonder, Glenn Simpson has all these intel friends, 
all these people in the intel community covered intelligence things when he was at the Wall Street Journal is it possible that he left the Wall Street Journal with his partner because they were CIA and they were going to set up the CIA front operation because when we look at the close proximity of these people in the intelligence community remember Mr. Orr was in the intelligence business at the Justice Department Peter Ben Strokinus was counterintelligence at the FBI. Now we find out that Mr. Orr's wife was CIA, working at Fusion GPS. John Brennan fits into this somewhere. That was Hillary's inside man. Are we going to find out? that Fusion GPS is a CIA front company that was doing what they do because remember Fusion GPS operates all over the world they're very involved in what's going on in Venezuela they do all kinds of this type of stuff and they do it around the world how do they get that type of play and connections through the intelligence community Keep digging, Mr. Nunez, Mr. Grassley. I'll keep digging. That's where my mind's taking me. Man, oh man. This rabbit hole is getting deep. It's getting dark. It's getting cold. We're making progress. Thank you for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow. More Towergate. Good night.